Welcome everyone. This is separation processes course presented by me, Saifullah. Our topic today is multi-stage binary distillation. So we have three terminologies here, multi-stage, binary, and distillation. Binary means that we have only two components in the mixture and distillation it is a method of separation that separate two components based on uh, based on the difference in the boiling point as we discussed in the previous lecture so let me elaborate more on this term the multi-stage what do we mean by multi-stage the stage itself, as we discussed before, the stage is a place where the liquid can meet the vapor. Okay? And this is called a single stage. It is only one stage, one place for the vapor to meet the liquid, only one room for them. Okay? So this is the single stage distillation, which was discussed in the previous video multi-stage it means that rather than having only one stage we have same as this one but we have it two times or three times or four times up to any number okay so this is what we mean by the multi-stage and where we are going to put all of these stages a uh, one stage could be for example a plate it could be only a plate where the liquid is on the plate and the vapor enter from holes like this the vapor enter from holes and the liquid stay on the surface of the plate so they can meet this is a typical uh, stage a stage or it's called also a tray a tray or stage same meaning we can use them interchangeably okay so this is a stage if we have for example 15 stages or 50 stages or whatever we are going to put all of these plates all of these trays stages we need a column we need a column or a tower so we will have this column or tower and we are going to put our stages inside this column and between each stage there will be some uh, specific uh, space between them uh, that the required space between the stages is not going to be discussed in this course uh, it will be discussed later in other courses, but our focus in this course is to analyze two things. The design of this column and the performance of this column. And what do we mean by design and performance? Uh, I can say that generally we have two types of problems. We have two types of chemical engineering problems regarding the distillation columns. Uh, the first type is the design problem. And we mean by the design problem for the distillation column is that we want to determine the number of stages that has a simple N, capital N. So this is called a design problem when we want to find the required number of stages in this distillation column the second type of a problem is called the performance problems the performance problems is when we want to find the performance of this column uh, the performance means that uh, the percentage of the light component in the distillate 
uh, it means that after we make the distillation uh, using this column what's the composition of the light component in the product and it has a simple xd x means the composition d means in the distillate and when i say xd only without any subscript this means it is for the light component okay keep this always in your mind when there is no subscript this means it is for the light component our focus is the light component not the heavy okay uh, let me elaborate more between the difference between and uh, this problems where the number of stages is required and the problems where the composition of the light component and the distillate the product is required uh, let me draw a uh, a column let me draw a column like this suppose we have a column with specific number of stages and we have this is the feed this is the feed okay and let's say it is f the feed f with composition z f the composition in the feed okay and when i say z f without any other subscript this mean i refer to the light component okay and then we have this is the product from the top product and the bottom product okay of course the top product will contain more of the more volatile component because it is lighter and the bottom component will contain more of the heavier component or in other words less of the more volatile component okay um, so when we want to when we want to determine the composition here the composition of the light component in the distillate this one is called the distillate and this one is called the waste or the bottom the waste or the bottom when we want to determine this composition of the more volatile component in the distillate this is a performance problem where in this case the number of stages here will be given okay so you have this specific column with this specific number of stages and specific design we we have the design already and we want to predict its performance its performance is to predict the composition and the distillate of the more volatile component and the other type of the problem is the design problem with we we know our target for example let's say we want to achieve 90 percent 90 percent composition of the light component in the distillate we know our target okay this is our target but we still we don't have this column this column we don't have it but we know what we want to we want to have 90 percent of the more volatile component in the distillate so we know our target and we want to determine the required number of stages that can accomplish our needs okay so it is the opposite way we know that we know our target our goal but we don't know how many stages are required to reach this goal so in other words we want to determine the number of stages and this is called a design problem mainly in this course especially for the continuous distillation we are going to focus on the design problem where the number of stages is required okay given that the performance or our goal is known okay so this is the difference between the design problems and uh, the performance problems and uh, one thing that i want to mention here does distillation always involve a column with stages no it is not necessarily i can have a column 
that is used for distillation and it is packed with packing material it is not there is no stages no it is packed with packing material and this is called a packed column as you discussed in the mass transfer course and for the packed for the packed column you need a weight based model to analyze this type of column based on the mass transfer coefficient as you discussed in the mass transfer course but in this course for this course, we are going to focus on the column where there is stages or trays. There's stages, so we cannot use the rate-based model because the rate-based model depends on a continuous contact between the vapor and liquid. See, we have everywhere we have packing material where the liquid can meet the, vap the vapor. But here in the trade column the liquid and vapor can meet only in each stage they are not continuously meet each other so we need to use other type of models called the equilibrium based model and our focus in this course will be on the equilibrium based based model with trade column a column with stages okay and remember that uh, remember that when I say uh, for this course separation process course we need only two things to solve any problem we need only two things the first thing is the material balance and that's the second thing is the equilibrium relationships okay so we need only these two things to solve any problem uh, regarding the separation processes. Okay, uh, so that's it uh, for the trade column. Now let me analyze this column or talk more about the operation of this column. Uh, suppose we have a feed here. We have a feed w that contains for example let's say it contains uh, benzene for example and toluene just for example and for sure that benzene is the more volatile component as it has uh, the lower the lowest boiling point of these two combination okay the lower the boiling point this means the component is more volatile it is easier to go to the vapor phase okay so let's say I have this is the this is the feed with a composition in the feed ZF okay and again just to remember when I say ZF without any other subscript I am referring to the more volatile component I am referring to this guy the more volatile component and then this feed is going to enter this column okay so it is going like this and entering this column and this column has a specific number of stages and the feed is going to one of these stages any stage uh, the feed of course there are some calculations to determine the optimum feed stage it is like which stage I need to put my feed in uh, but uh, we will talk about it later uh, let's say this feed is entering at this stage and then uh, this feed contains uh, benzene and uh, toluene and they are in the liquid base suppose that the feed is in liquid base okay so what will happen in the startup of this process now we are going we are talking about the startup of the process the process didn't start yet okay i am going to start it so this is my feed i pump it into the column what will happen if it is a liquid okay if it is a liquid what will happen to the feed the feed is going to go down 
because it is a liquid right because of gravity the gravity will take the feed down which is liquid okay so I didn't do anything I don't have separation yet because I have only one vase I have only one vase which is the liquid vase and to do separation I need two vases I need vapor vase and liquid vase right and then the more volatile component will be more in the vapor phase so I can remove this vapor phase and take it as my product which contains more of the more volatile component okay uh, so I have only one phase which is a liquid so what I need to do I will take this liquid stream and introduce a boiler introduce a boiler to boil this liquid okay and uh, I am not going to boil all of this liquid because if I am going to boil all, all of this liquid I will have only vapor base so still I have only one base so I need to partial boiling it to partial boil it it is like partial boiling like uh, I will boil only some of this some of this will be vapor the other I will leave it as liquid okay so this is a partial boiler I boil only a specific amount of it and then this vapor going out I am going to return it back to the column so it is vapor okay so it is vapor and the remaining liquid I am going to take it as the bottom product as the bottom product or we can call it the waste product so let me give it a simple for example W which is the model flow rate of the bottom product or the waste product you can call it W or B uh, but I like to call it W more okay and this uh, this waste stream will contain a specific composition X W so XW means the composition in the waste stream of what of the more volatile component okay of course it will be small why it is small because the bottom stream will contain more liquid means it has more of the mo of the heavy component which is toluene but still it will have small amount of this benzene the light component okay when i say the light component it means the more volatile component when i say heavy component it means uh, the less volatile component okay so the light component is benzene and the heavy component is toluene okay so this will be the waste stream that contains xw the composition of the light component in the waste okay and then i'm going to return this vapor back into the column what will happen when this vapor enter the column the vapor has a very low density right it has very low density so it is going to escape up it is going to go up okay so this is vapor it's going to go up go until reach here the top of the column because it is a vapor it is going to expand it is going to move it's going to escape upward okay so i will take this vapor i will take this vapor and then i'm going to condense it using a condenser okay why i'm going to condense it because after i condense it I can take a stream as my product and the other stream will be returned to the column okay so this this is vapor and this will be liquid due to a condenser and this stream will be my product my overall product which I can call the distillate so the distillate is the top product 
which of course will contain more of the light component which is the benzene so the composition of the light component in this stream I will call it XD okay so XD refers X is the composition okay and D of course we are using the composition which is the uh, mole fraction the mole fraction actually we are using the mole fractions so X refers to the mole fraction the composition in D in the distillate of the mole polyethyl component which is the light component so by default it is for the light component and of course it will be high okay because it is in the top okay uh, and this condenser I use this condenser to return some of the liquid why I need to return some of the liquid to have a continuous flow of liquid back so overall overall I will have continuous liquid moving down and continuous vapor going up okay that's why I introduce here the condenser and I introduce the boiler you can call it boiler or the boiler uh, they are the same boiler or the boiler okay and uh, but the boiler will be always partial the boiler partial the boiler why because I want to take some vapor and return it back and take the product as a liquid okay but for the case of condensers the condenser could be a partial condenser or total condenser in most of the cases it is total condenser why because total condenser I'm going to uh, make a liquid that can be returned to the column and on the same uh, on the same way I, I'm going to make a liquid product which is more easier to store it is more easier to store the liquid because it is not going to expand okay it has a lower energy okay but in the some cases we can use a partial condenser a partial condenser we will take the liquid and return it back into the column and we will take the product as a vapor but it is yani, not not famous to use this yani. but it could be but for the reboiler it is always partial reboiler for the condenser it could be total condenser both liquid or partial condenser where we have the liquid returned back into the column and the product as vapor okay uh, so uh, <clears throat> before before we go into the mathematical modeling of this distillation column uh, let me draw it again in a simple way so we have this is my column okay with a specific number of stages and this is the feed and then I have this is the condenser return some of the liquid and this is the v uh, this is the distillate and i have here this is the reboiler and i will retain some of the vapor and this is the waste product w with composition xw and here with composition xd and here is the feed with composition zf okay a very important point to notice here uh, is that it is not always that the feed is a liquid the feed could be a liquid it could be a vapor it could be a mixture of liquid and vapor it could be subcooled it could be superheated okay what's the difference between these uh, the difference that uh, for example suppose you have a water you have a cup of water h2o uh, and it is under conditions of one atmosphere okay suppose this case and this water is at 
25 degrees C and we know that at one atmospheric pressure the water will boil at 100 degrees C right so as you can see we are far away from the boiling point so this liquid is called subcooled liquid subcooled liquid if we start to heat this liquid using a heater so the temperature will increase 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 until it reach 100 degrees C at 100 degrees C it will be still a liquid that is about to evaporate at this stage it is called saturated liquid okay and then if I'm going to continue heating this water what will happen what will happen is that the water will remain at 100 degrees C but it will try to go into other phase which is the vapor phase so it will take this heat and break the bonds between the liquid molecules to form the vapor molecule okay once it form uh, before it forms the vapor molecule there will be a mixture of liquid and vapor right before it becomes all vapor there will be a mixture of some liquid and then and some vapor this is called saturated mixture saturated mixture and then when everything becomes vapor when everything becomes vapor this will be so everything becomes vapor this is saturated vapor and why it is saturated because still i am in 100 degree c but i have all the system as vapor okay and then suppose if i continue heating this i am heating heating until it's 150 uh, 200 etc so i am far away from the boiling point which is 100 degree c so this is called the superheated the superheated state this is the superheated state so we have again uh, we have either it is subcooled liquid or saturated liquid or saturated mixture of liquid and vapor or saturated vapor or superheated uh, to present this mathematically let's define let's define a quantity called q to present the liquid fraction in the system and what do we mean by this q it means that if you have a system of liquid and vapor suppose that this total system is 100 mole suppose that you have a liquid of 60 mole here we are talking about the moles of the liquid it is not the moles of the component for example you may have here benzene and toluene both occur in the vapor phase and liquid phase but the total moles in the liquid phase is 60 moles which may contain some benzene and more of the toluene okay so what will be this quantity q simply this quantity q will be the mole of the liquid divided by the total number of moles of the whole system okay so it will be 60 mole of the liquid over 100 mole which is 60 percent or 0 0.6 in other words okay so this is called the quantity q which, which represents the amount of the uh, liquid in our system okay so if we have a system with only liquid so and let's say it is at saturation condition it is saturated liquid so it is about to evaporate okay it is at the boiling point or close to the boiling point okay so in this case q will be equal to one okay and if we have saturated mixture like liquid and vapor 
So let's say this amount of liquid is L and the total system is S for example. So Q will be uh, L divided by the total system S, the number of moles of the total system. In other words, Q will be definitely between 0 and 1 or between 0 percentage and 100 percentage. Okay. And the other case is where I have uh, only vapor and it is at saturation condition close to the boiling point. It is a saturated vapor. In this case, I will have zero liquid. There is no liquid, so Q will be zero. Okay, so Q will be zero. Uh, now, let me talk about the other two cases, which is subcooled. Uh, if I have subcooled uh, sub liquid, uh, in the case of the subcooled liquid, I need to use a relation to find the Q. Uh, okay, so Q. Okay, if it is between 0 and 1, it is saturated mixture. If it is 0, it is a vapor. If it is 1, it uh, if it is zero, it is saturated vapor. If it is one, it is saturated liquid. Okay. Suppose if it is greater than one, from one to infinity. So this will be uh, from like 1.1 .1 to infinity. If this is liquid, so this will be subcooled liquid. Subcooled liquid. Okay. And if it is less than less than zero like from uh, minus 0 0.1 to minus infinity, it will be, since 0 is saturated vapor, so it will be uh, less than 0, it means it is superheated uh, vapor. But one may ask this question, how we can get Q greater than 1 and how we can get Q less than 0 we get a negative Q how it is possible and why it is possible <coughs> uh, sorry to answer this question uh, how it is possible uh, let me write the equation for that if you have uh, first if you have a subcooled if you have sub Called liquid, the equation will be uh, Q is equal to 1 plus the specific heat Cb of the liquid multiplied by the Tb, <coughs> the bubble point temperature minus the feed temperature uh, over the latent heat of vaporization delta. Okay, so this is for the case of subcooled uh, liquid. So Cp is the specific heat capacity of the liquid. Okay, Tp is the purple point, uh, which I have discussed in the thermodynamics. But in this cause, we in separation process, we are not going to focus on the purple point calculation because it is, has to do with uh, thermodynamics uh, so we uh, usually it will be given if it is needed okay and T feed, TF is the temperature of the feed of the feed to the column and lambda is the latent heat of vaporization or sometimes they call it delta H vap the latent heat of vaporization which is the amount needed to evaporate the liquid into vapor and it can be calculated by many relations or also in thermodynamics but we join this course it will be given if it is needed because the calculation of this quantity is the business of chemical engineering thermodynamics where you can use Clausius equation or Clausius and Calabrian equation etc Wagner equation uh, but it is not the business of the separation processes. So if it is needed, usually it will be given in the problem. <coughs> okay. So this is for the case of subcode. So as you can see, uh, as you can see, it is 1 plus something. That's, that's why it can be greater than 1. 
for the subcode. Q could be greater than 1. Okay, so this is from the mathematical point of view. Uh, and if we have a superheated, let me now talk about the superheated case. Uh, for the superheated, uh, the equation the equation will be Q is equal to the specific heat capacity of the vapor phase multiplied by the dew point minus the feed point uh, divided by the latent heat of vaporization. Okay, again, this is the specific heat of the vapor. And this is the dew point temperature, which is again the business of chemical engineering thermodynamics. Uh, it is not the business of separation processes, so usually it will be given if it is needed in the calculation. Uh, and this is the feed temperature, the temperature of the feed introduced to the column. Uh, and this is the latent heat of vaporization, the same as what we have discussed. Okay. So as you can see, if uh, usually uh, you have this is the temperature, the purple point temperature, and we have the dew point temperature, and we have the feed temperature. Okay. Uh, so if the feed is superheated, if the feed is superheated, Okay, so this means that the temperature of the feed is that higher than the temperature of the dew point. The dew point is the point where the first droplet uh, of the feed, uh, if we have, no, no, no. The dew point is that when you have, uh, the dew point is when you have a vapor and you are cooling it down, you are decreasing the temperature. So the first droplet occur of the liquid, the first droplet, this is called the dew point. So for the uh, for sure, if we have a superheated vapor that has a very high temperature, okay. So this means that the feed temperature will be higher than the dew point. So this quantity T D minus T F will be less than zero. That's why I can get a negative Q. So this is again from the mathematical point of view. This is how I can get uh, Q more than 1 and Q less than 0. Uh, now, let me talk about why. Why we are using these formulas for the superheated and for the subcode liquids. Uh, why is that? Because, because if I, for example, this is the column. If I am introducing a superheated, a superheated vapor here what will happen is that this vapor as it goes up it will meet some of the liquid that is going down and since it is superheated it has a high temperature it will evaporate it will evaporate some of this liquid okay it, there will be some evaporation and doing some energy balance you can obtain this relation uh, where this relation will take into account for this evaporation. Okay, the same thing if I, uh, rather than introducing superheated feed, if I introduce subcooled liquid, so this liquid will go down and it will meet the vapor that's going up and it will try to condense some of this vapor. Because subcool it has a very low temperature, okay, so it will try to uh, condense this vapor and form some of the liquid. And to take into account for this condensation, we need to use this equation to account for this effect, okay. So that's why we use this relations for the subcool and for the superheated. But usually, in most of the cases, just to repeat, in most of the cases, we will have a, a saturated vapor feed where Q is equal to zero, or subcooled feed where Q is equal to one, or a, a saturated mixture feed where Q is between zero and one. This is for most of the cases. Okay. 
uh, so uh, that's it and one thing that I want to mention someone would ask this question what's the difference between distillation column uh, that this distillation column this guy and the absorption column remember the absorption column from the mass transfer courts where you have uh, this is you introduce the vapor and this is the vapor out and then you introduce a liquid and this is the outlet of the liquid what's the difference between distillation and absorption the difference is that uh, in distillation in distillation i am producing the vapor from the liquid itself so i have this is the feed and if it is a liquid it will go to the reboiler the reboiler will produce the vapor from this liquid so the vapor is produced from this liquid this is in distillation or if i have a vapor so the vapor will go to the condenser and the condenser will produce the liquid vase so the liquid vase is generated from the vapor phase or the vapor phase is generated from the liquid phase this is distillation okay but in the absorption column i have this liquid and i have this vapor i already uh, use them so that's why i call it a gas we say that it is a gas because it is not generated from this liquid so the gas will enter here and go up the liquid will enter and go down and there will be a contact here between them so this gas is not generated from this liquid this is the case of the absorption column and this is the difference in distillation we generate a vase from the other vase but in absorption i already have the two phases and i'm just making a contact between them okay uh, now the the last thing that uh, i want to talk about in this video is the mathematical modeling of this distillation the mathematical modeling of this distillation is called uh, it is called the makeup tele method makeup tele method mt makeup tele method for analyzing any distillation column uh, a good way uh, but still it is an approximation way is the makeup tele method it is used to do the calculations uh, which require to determine the number of the required stages so if i which is design problem as we mentioned in the beginning of this video uh, if you want to determine the number of stages in a column how many stages i need to achieve a required composition of the light component in the product and uh, this is um so i know this for example suppose i want 90 percent separation i want 90 percent uh, mole of uh, the light component in the distillate so the question will be how many stages i need how many places that the liquid can meet the vapor i need in order to get this performance okay and to determine this number of stages uh, we are going to we are going to use a method that's called the makeup tele method the makeup tele method okay uh, this method uh, this method uh, has two main assumption it has two main assumption uh, the first assumption is that we have 100% efficiency uh, and what do we mean by 100% efficiency of the uh, trays or of the stages tray is the same as a stage when I say stage or tray they are the same okay so in makeup delay method they assume that we have 100% efficiency of the tray the efficiency of the tray uh, i will discuss it in the next video okay but keep it for now as it is i will i'm going to discuss it later the tray efficiency and the other assumption uh, uh, is that i am neglecting 
I am neglecting uh, the energy balance. I am neglecting the energy balance. It has, don't has uh, a big effect on the calculation. Okay. Later on, we are going to discuss another method called the Ponchon Savalite method, where I will take into account this energy balance. But for now, for the makeup delay method, we are going to neglect the energy balance. So, in other words, we are going to base our calculations on two things the material balance and the equilibrium relationships the material balance and the equilibrium relationships uh, this will be the basis of our calculations okay and to write the mathematical modeling uh, of uh, the of this method which is the makeup today method uh, first let me draw the column again let me draw the column again so I have this is my column okay and it has specific number of stages and this is the feed with composition of light component ZF and this is the condenser and it will retain some of the liquid back and we will take some of this as uh, a product so this is the condenser it is removing heat uh, and let me call it the distillate with a composition XD and this the reboiler which will evaporate the liquid and return some of the vapor back and take the other as bottom product which is called the waste or W with a composition XW so this is the main schematic of a, a typical distillation column <coughs> okay so this is a typical schematic of that distillation column uh, so this feed will enter with specific Q so this Q would determine the base of the feed if it is zero it is saturated vapor if it is one it's saturated liquid if it is in between it is saturated mixture as we have just discussed uh, okay so uh, and of course this top will be vapor okay uh, and then it will go into this condenser so I will get some liquid right so this vapor and liquid will meet in each stage so for each stage there will be vapor going up and liquid going down vapor going up and liquid going down vapor going up and liquid going down etc for each stage okay until the the boiler so this will be only liquid going down due to the gravity okay this the boiler will generate some vapor okay will generate some vapor uh, but I want to talk about a very important point here is that does this vapor here and liquid here the same as this vapor and this liquid no they are not the same why because I am introducing a feed here and this feed could co could contain some of the liquid could contain some of the vapor could contain uh, liquid and vapor both so when I introduce this here this will divide my column into two separate sections this will divide my column into two separate sections uh, the first section the top section let me call it the uh, enriching section the enriching section which is the top section and the bottom section let me call it uh, the stripping section okay so this is just a terminology uh, the top section will be called the enriching section and the bottom section will be called uh, the stripping section okay so this is the enriching section and this is the stripping section okay so 
and they are divided by the feed stream by the feed stream above the feed stream this is the uh, enriching section below the feed stream this is the uh, stripping section so of course because i have this effect of the feed so the vapor here in this section will be different than the vapor in this section so let me call it v and this let me call it v dash okay same for the liquid the liquid here will be same everywhere okay but it is different than the liquid here in this section so let me call this liquid l dash okay so just to illustrate again this is my column this is the feed this is the enriching section and this is the stripping section okay so this section has a liquid going down which is l and this section has a vapor going up which is v and this vapor will be taken so it is this always also will be v it will be taken to the condenser and for this section the stripping section okay again i will have a liquid going down but it is different because of the effect of the feed because i have i may have some quantity of the liquid and vapor here so let me call it l dash and i will have some of the vapor going up and it will be different so let me call it v dash okay so each section each section has its own liquid and own vapor molar flow rate and again uh, i'm going to take this liquid and it reduce a reboiler here okay uh, and now let me talk about uh, the material balance here so suppose the feed was a specific quantity q which represents the quantity of liquid in the feed so a simple material balance where we are assuming the steady state condition can tell me that uh, if I take this as my control volume okay so this is my control volume the center of the column it is not exactly the center but it is the place where the feed come so this is the feed here with a specific quantity of uh, liquid Q percentage uh, okay so i will have here liquid going down from the top section and vapor going up from the uh, top section and here i will have liquid going down l dash from the bottom section and vapor going up which is v dash and it is v dash because it is from the bottom section so a simple material balance uh, taking this as control volume and assuming a steady state so in equal out there is no accumulation so I can write that this in is equal to out okay so I can say that of course I am talking about molar flow rate so I can say that this liquid here plus QF which is the percentage of liquid multiplied by the feed plus QF is equal to this liquid out okay again for the vapor in equal out so I can say that this V dash plus now if I say that Q is the liquid percentage this means that 1 minus Q is the vapor percentage okay 1 minus Q is the vapor percentage so I can say that V dash plus 1 minus Q multiplied by the feed is equal to out which is this vapor okay so this is just a material balance equations that you can use for example if you know L you know Q you know F and you want to determine L dash or uh, if you know V and you want to determine V dash, you can use the simple material balance around the, uh, the place where the feed is introduced to the column. Okay, so this may be some useful relationships. 
and the other thing that I want to talk about is something called the reflux and something called the uh, the uh, boil up what's the reflux and what's the boil up again suppose I have this distillation column with this number of stages and this is the feed with ZF and this is the condenser and this is the reboiler okay so this is the distillate with composition XD and this is the waste with composition XW uh, what I want to mention here is something called the reflux the reflux okay so uh, before mentioning what the reflux is let me write the vases on each stream out of the column C for this stream this will be vapor and then it will go to the condenser take some of the heat so I will get a liquid okay similarly at the bottom this will be liquid that's following due to the graffiti and then it will go to the the boiler and this the boiler will produce a vapor okay so now what's the reflux and what's the boil up uh, okay and the reflux is this L that is going back to the column from the condenser this is called the reflux okay and this vapor that is going out from the reboiler and return it back to the column uh, this is called the boil up okay so this is the reflux and this is the boil up uh, okay and to be consistent with the symbols this is V dash actually because it is in the uh, bottom section so let me call it V dash to be consistent with the symbol uh, okay now so this is the reflux and the boil up there's a something called the reflux ratio the reflux not only the reflux no it is the reflux ratio the reflux ratio <coughs> I have uh, two types of the reflux ratio okay uh, the first type is called the external reflux ratio external the other type is called the internal reflux ratio the reflux ratio it has a simple R okay so the external reflux reflux ratio will be r equal simply i divide the reflux by the distillate and remember this is all mole flow rates molar flow rates okay this is molar flow rates so it will be simply l divided by d the reflux divided by the distillate the internal reflux ratio is simply let's call it ri to distinguish between them will be inside the column what i have inside the column i have liquid and vapor vapor going up and liquid going down if i divide this liquid by vapor i will get the internal reflux ratio okay but in most of the cases our focus is about the reflux ratio the external reflux ratio this is our focus but in some cases you will be given the information as internal reflux ratio okay but when we are going to develop the mathematical modeling we will base our models on the external reflux ratio okay similarly we say that this is the uh, vapor uh, the vapor which is the boil up so there is something called the boil up ratio boil boil up ratio and uh, let me give it a simple beta okay and what's this boil up ratio uh, there is no internal and external boil up ratio it is only one which is beta is equal to c i will divide this vapor by 
this waste product V by W. This will give me the boil up ratio. This is the boil up ratio. Okay. Now I think all the terminologies are clear and now we can go and discuss uh, the mathematical point of view of the makeup tele method. So what's makeup tele method which is used for analyzing this distillation columns? Uh, the makeup delay method, first thing you need to know about, it is a graphical method. It is a graphical method, so it is approximate method. It is not accurate, it is numerical method, which depends on the graphs. And the second thing that you need to know, it is only valid for binary system, when you have two components only. If you have more than two components, we are going to learn other methods okay so this is the makeup tele method it is graphical method and it is only for binary uh, mixtures it is only valid for uh, binary mixtures okay it is only valid for binary mixtures what's this method simply this method this method uh, depends on having some uh, material balance and equilibrium uh, relationships okay so this method is using the material balance it will use this material balance three times okay and it will use the equilibrium relationship the equilibrium relationships uh, only one time okay how this gonna work uh, we will see but we will have a equilibrium uh, relation called the equilibrium equilibrium line and we will have three material balance lines and uh, the first line is called the uh, is the top section is the top section operating operating line the second one is the bottom bottom section operating line and the last one is called the Q line okay combining combining all of this combining this three material balances with the equilibrium relationship, I can solve any distillation problem, but it must be a uh, multi-stage and binary mixture. Okay, by combining this and this. So how we can develop the mathematical modeling for this lines, for this three material lines and the one equilibrium line, uh, first, let me talk about the equilibrium line, and then I will talk about the material balance lines. Okay, the equilibrium line uh, is simply we have two ways to develop this equilibrium line. We have two ways to uh, to develop this uh, equilibrium line. Uh, the first way, the first way is. An experimental way is that you will be given, you will be given a table that contains uh, the mole fraction x and y, mole fraction in liquid phase and mole fraction in the vapor phase, with with some experimental values, and then simply you will take a graph paper, and this is the y-axis, the x-axis. And you are going to plot each point, like this point here, 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 and then connect these points. And that's it. This is the first method. The second method is that you will be given a constant uh, value of the relative volatility, as we discussed in, in the previous video. 
in the previous video that we, we said that if we have a constant value of the relative volatility, for example, 2 or 3, 4, etc. So we can use we can use an equation which is y is equal to uh, y is equal to alpha multiplied by x 1 plus x uh, and then alpha minus 1 so you have this alpha and what you are going to do is that you will uh, assume a value for x for example 0 0.1 0 0.2 but it should be between 0 and 1 okay uh, the x, uh, sorry, the x should be between 0 and 1 because it is a mole fraction. Okay, so you will assume some values of x and use the calculator to get values of y. Then you construct this table. Then you put the point and again you, uh, you draw a line between them. And that's it. So it depends about what's given in the problem. If you are given an experimental data, you are given this table directly, so you can directly plot them. And if you are given a constant value of the relative volatility, so you need to construct this table first, and then you can draw. So this is the first line, this guy, see? This is the first line, which is the equilibrium line. What about the other lines? The top operate the top section operating line the bottom section operating line and the q line how we can write this uh, three lines simply as we have say that these lines are developed from the material balance it is a simple material balance i'm going to show it uh, see you have this is the distillation column and this is the condenser, and this is the reboiler, right? And we say that we have uh, this is called uh, this is called the uh, enriching section, the top section. And let me include the condenser with it. Uh, and this is called the uh, the bottom section, which is the stripping section. Okay, and let me include the reboiler with it. So I can divide my distillation column into two sections. Let me uh, do some uh, uh, material balance on this section, and then I will do material balance on this section. And let's say what will happen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this section first, the top section. Okay, so let me draw it again. I'm going to draw only the top section. So you have half of the column and you have this is the condenser. Uh, this is liquid and this is the distillate and this is the composition in the distillate of the light component. And this is some tray here. And remember that uh, we have always what we have vapor going up and we have liquid going down okay so let me now do the material balance on this section only on this section okay so what i'm going to get the overall material balance assuming it is a steady state so n equal out of course i am talking about the molar flow rates the molar material balance Okay, so I can write in equal out what I have here. I have V as an inlet. I have only one inlet, which is V is equal to, and remember, I am taking only this section without the feed and without the bottom section, only the top section. Okay, so I will have V is equal to uh, the out, which is L plus D. Okay, so this is the overall material balance. Let me write the component material balance. So it is just I'm going to multiply by the mole fraction. So it will be the mole fraction in the vapor phase. Y multiplied by the vapor phase is equal to the mole fraction in the liquid phase, which is X multiplied by L plus the mole fraction in the distillate 
which is x d multiplied by the distal and when I say only x this means the composition of the liquid vase anywhere it could be here it could be here it could be here here that's why I'm saying it is x but when I say x d so I am referring to this guy in the distillate okay uh, so this is like a parameter and this x is a variable x could be anything the composition anywhere but it must be in the liquid vase but x d is the composition only in the distillate so it is a parameter it is not a variable okay so I will get uh, what I will get that I will get this uh, relation right I will get this relation let me divide both sides by V if I divide the both sides by V I will get that Y is equal to L by V X plus X D D by uh, by V okay that's what I'm going to get see can you notice something here what is this this is R I the internal reflex ratio okay so this is in terms of the internal reflex ratio what about if I want to write this equation in terms of the external reflux ratio how I'm going to do this uh, and first uh, to do this I need to write what's R what's R R is L the reflux over D the distillate okay and what you can see here I have L but I don't have D so I need to replace this V with D how I am going to do this I will see this is C the top here I have a vapor and here I have the distillate and here I have a liquid if I do material balance around the condenser I can write that uh, I can write the vapor as equal to L plus D right so I can replace this V with L plus D okay so I can write L over V this internal reflux ratio uh, is equal to this L over V is equal to L and I can replace the V with L plus D okay which is I can write it in this way 1 over L plus D over L right I just take this down you know that the denominator of a denominator can go up so I only did the opposite so if I divide this by this and this by this uh, I will get that L over V is equal to 1 over uh, 1 plus C this D over L we know that R is equal to L over D so D over L will be 1 over R okay so I will get 1 plus 1 over R okay and then I can make a common denominator between these two so I will get that 1 over R plus 1 over R which is simply R over R plus 1 okay so see I can replace this L over V in terms of the external reflux ratio so let me rewrite the equation so the equation will be Y is equal to R over R plus 1 this is the external flux ratio R and multiplied by X plus X D okay and what we have here we have D over V we have D over V again I can do the same thing okay let me write it here I have D over V which is uh, D over L plus D I can take this D down so it will be 1 over L over D is the reflux D over D is 1 so it will be 1 over R plus 1 so I can directly write X D over R plus 1 
so this is our first equation this equation is called the top section operating the top section operating line this is called the top section operating line okay and this is the first material balance equation see this is the first material balance equation in the makeup delay method the second one is the bottom section operating line which is same thing i'm going to take this bottom section okay the same way the same way i'll take this bottom section and this is the reboiler this is vapor uh, this is uh, the waste mm, again i'm going to perform a material balance this is vapor going up liquid going down and remember that we call them l dash and v dash because uh, they are in the bottom section okay so similarly i'm going to do the same thing again you can try it by yourself you will get this equation y is equal to uh, l dash over v dash uh, l dash over v dash multiplied by x minus x w multiplied by w uh, divided by v dash okay so this the same equation obtain it by the same way but we are on the bottom section the stripping section okay and this will be called the bottom the bottom section operating line and this is equation number two so this is equation number two and uh, this is equation one so we have only one equation remains uh, which is uh, equation number three which is called the q line how i am going to obtain this q line equation this q line equation from its name it is called a q uh, it is called q line okay uh, how i am going to obtain this equation uh, we will discuss it inshallah in the next video and after obtaining these three equations we are going to discuss how we can combine them with the equilibrium relationship in order to apply the makeup delay method to solve any multi-stage binary distillation thank you for your watching i'm wishing you all the best